Hello everybody, my name is Card Gaming, and welcome to Deadfire. Now I've been quite excited for this for a long time since Spittles of Eternity 1, which I did a full playthrough on the channel if you want to check that out. I also did the um, like um, closed beta version, which was pretty awesome, but I believe this full version is gonna have like a different start. Probably. Let's find out, shall we? Aora. A world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods, and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a Watcher. One who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions. Waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual. A seemingly immortal agent of the gods. Known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos, ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected. That the ancient Empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cadnua built atop a massive statue of pure Audra, where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Until everything went horribly awry. Now, I just learned that uh, it's pronounced Audra. I, I think I spent the entire playthrough of the first game saying it's Adra. But that's fine. You made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep, lifting the curse. Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to nod at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. But maybe the gods weren't finished with us. So you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. Have I really? Oh, that's pretty neat. So the giant statue underneath Kainua was actually the um, sort of like an avatar of Aethas, the fallen, destroyed god is what I'm getting here. You have seen past the Shroud. You are a Watcher now, and the Watcher you will stay. Who are these people? A Watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. 
I do like that we're getting like a um, recap of the first honor, game. Inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. I really like Kainua building up that stronghold. If you are new to the channel, what I love strongholds in games. Hmm? A higher power, a rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked. And supposedly, the instead of Kate Nua, but this time we're gonna get a pirate ship. Something created by people. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Oh, what is this swirling mess? Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. In uh, the first game, we actually made a deal with one of the gods, if I recall correctly. Come. Not sure how that panned out, but there, I think there was like a um, epilogue thing. It's been a while. But I think you feel like you um, didn't keep your promise. Bad things would have happened. An the god would have come strange floating with vengeance. Platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved merry gore, replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. I like that there they have like more voices this time. Really guts down on my work. Uh, I was gonna say almost. Uh, no, no, that's not what I wanted to say at all. But I do also love that they've seemingly have upgraded the graphical fidelity, because this looks pretty awesome. Don't follow me, weird man. Should I sit here? Sit, please. Who's Thank this? you for joining us, Watcher of Cadnua. The, the gaunt knights. woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Are we gonna get like a, a tarot card reading? Your brush with the divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Oh, so is this like the um, character creation? Let's examine the cards. Yes, it is. Sort of. Ah, so this is the um, choices we made back in uh, the first game. So this is like a... a um, Best to worst kind of thing. I'm not even sure if we had like a perfect ending. I think I made one or two bad decisions. I um, remember the uh, tower being one of them. If you guys watched my playthrough of that. Hmm. But let's go with the best. Why not? In Pillars of Eternity, you return the lost Holoborn soul to the Deerwood's children as you had pledged to Hylia, one of the goddesses. The goddess of the sky. You were kind and merciful to people you encountered, sympathetic to their pain and charitable to those who needed help. Yes. Does everything appear to be in order? Sure. Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. One half, anyway. Ooh. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. Bereth is the god of death. Cycles doorways mortality in 
Inevitability. I believe one of our characters or one of our companions was a follower of Baraf. Mm, yeah, the dwarf Rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? Hmm. I did speak to the other gods. You did. She places a card on the table, showing a tall tower with the gods' constellations arrayed around it in the sky. She places a card in the middle of the arrangement, a bell tower with no bell. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced watcher to find him. But why don't you do it yourself? I mean, I'm not sure the gods can, like, manifest easily. But Aeolus did. Taking a physical form in Aeora is fraught with peril. Most mortal minds and bodies are incapable of containing divine power. It can lead to problems, as Aethus learned not long ago. Her armored hand gingerly places a card sideways on the table. It features a man with a burst of light instead of a head. Well, I'd like to find him as much as you would. He destroyed my castle and killed who knows how many people around it. I know. It is my business to know. 322 in Cadnua and your surrounding lands. That's a lot of people. Their souls remain in Aetha still. You have the power to save them. Serve me and I will return you to your body. Or don't. And return to the wheel. Wait, I can actually do that? Like, screw this game, I'm gonna be reincarnated. Um, that, that seems like a, um, she won't take that for an answer. So let's go with this. Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were, the last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. Character creation time! When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals. Yeah, character creation time! Now, in uh, the first game, I played as a female... Moon Goddess? Something? So I feel like we should do something similar, but I'm gonna do a different class, I believe. Because they've revamped the entire system and allow for like subclasses and multi-classing. Quite exciting. Uh, female Godlike, I think it was this one. Nature or Moon? I think it was a Moon Godlike. Yeah, so there are like sub um, races as well. Dexterity and intellect. I mean, I'm not sure if I want to do that. I mean, I'm not sure either if I want to do like power gaming. Because, I mean, maybe in the culture or the sub race, I can change it. Because dexterity and intellect might not be the best. Dexterity and intellect. Dexterity and intellect. So they all have dexterity and intellect, but they all have, um, like a sub, um, ability. Power level when near death. Naturally resistant to burn damage. Healing energy. Automatically generate a wave of healing around themselves. I do like that, though. Hmm, I also like that. Getting a power level, uh buff when you get buffs in uh, might, constitution, or dexterity. But I think we're gonna go with the same 
moon godlike. Looks pretty cool as well. Um, wait, what? Didn't I? Wait, what? What just happened? I definitely want to do multi-class. Our first class is going to be a. I've been thinking a lot about this. I think I was a druid last time. We did a lot of shape shifting and some nature magic, but I do want to do um, something a bit different. I'm gonna go with a ranger because I do like the archery. So as a ranger, we um, are mainly gonna use um, bows, and we have a animal companion, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, I don't want to preview the ability tree, I'm fine. As a subclass, I want to go with... So the ghost heart is... new to bonnet grief if my companion dies. Which is a, a bonus. Animal companion is immune to engagement, which is basically when I run out of uh, melee range. Yeah, I think so close range uh, but I wanted to go with a sharpshooter if we're gonna be a um, bow character we're gonna get a bonus hit to crit conversion basically that means a hit has a uh, ch higher chance to become a crit when attacking targets greater than four meters away and we're also gonna get bonus penetration as in go through armor and such but we're gonna get slower recovery time which is the uh, time between actions and a bit lower deflection, which is melee, usually, and some AoE. Let's go with the sharpshooter. As our first ability, we are gonna get Wounding Shot or Marked Prey. So the Wounding Shot is a dot, and the Marked Prey is a um, Hunter's Mark, basically, which gives the animal companion and the ranger, an accuracy bonus. I'm gonna go with that. And for our companion... Hmm... So we got a stag? Natural damage all enemies when they critical hit, so an AoE sort of thing. Wolves deal more damage. Lions have faster action speed. Bears are good tanks. Antelopes have natural defenses, and a boar regenerates health. Hmm. I do want someone sort of tanky. Maybe like an antelope. A bear might be too tanky though. I do want like a character that's a dedicated tank eventually. Let's go with an antelope, I think. Yeah. And as a second class, you might notice here, we have the, uh, like, uh, parentheses class here. That's the multi-class title when I um, get the uh, other class. So a barbarian and a ranger together becomes a savage, etc, etc. But what I do want to do here is get a fighter, I think, was gonna be my thing. And we're gonna be devoted as our subclass. This is gonna give us um, a single weapon proficiency in our chosen weapon, and increase penetration and critical hit with that chosen weapon. But we're gonna get a penalty in accuracy other than my chosen weapon. And no new proficiencies. Done. What do we have here? The fighter intensely focuses on their training. I think knockdown is a uh, melee range, yeah. And if we're gonna be a bow type character, this seems like a better uh, thing. Granting the aware inspiration, plus 5 perception and 50 grace to hit. Grace is basically like a half hit. If you get what I mean. And our animal companion is going to be... Mm. Hmm. 
should I name him? I believe we're gonna go with Nuber. Then we have our attributes. As a ranger or sharpshooter, we're probably gonna want high um, might to do more damage. Recommended for hunter. So each point here is going to give us a bit more damage and healing and fortitude. I definitely want to get up to something like 15. Seems good. Do I want to get more health and fortitude and constitution? I mean, if I'm going to be a range character, that might not be as useful as a perception, which is going to give me accuracy and reflex. So let's get that up to 15 as well. Resolve will give us hostile defense duration, or hostile effect duration, so it's lower duration on, like, debuffs. Deflection and will. I think we're actually gonna go with more... either accuracy or might, or both. I think we can put more points into both of these, or get more attribute points as we level up. Well, let's go with this. Yeah, that is gonna be a good start. What culture do we hail from? These are gonna have a uh, bit of effect in uh, conversations. And give us some bonuses here. So, the game, as the name implies, basically takes place in the Deadfar Archipelago. So, that could be a good choice. I think I did that for... Uh, the uh, close beta. That's gonna give us plus one dexterity. But, as we said here, dexterity is not that important for me. So if I want to get something more important, I could get, for example, more um, of the living lands. I think I actually picked that in the first game. So that might actually be a good thing. Done. And we also have a uh, job background, which is gonna give us some further skill this time. Penalty or bo bonuses, not penalties. So we can be a colonist and get survival athletics alchemy. We're gonna go through all of these once we get into it. But I wanna be... Mm, a hunter could be good. Get that RP. And get the uh, nice bonuses. But I also like the explorer. Hmm, we're gonna recruit a bunch of companions later, so we can, like, specialize if we want. Diplomacy is pretty damn good. So I'm gonna go with that. And our favorite weapon is gonna be war or hunting bow. Hmm. Slower draws. Wait, what? Ah, the hunting bow is strong or is faster, but the war bow is harder or hits harder and can penetrate the hardest armor. So we're gonna go with that. Done. And we want a cool uh, portrait here as well. We're gonna go with the same one as the last time, which was this one. Colors. We can customize. Her outfit. Maybe do some nature -y type things. Sort of like... Brown, maybe? A brown and a... Uh, maybe swap those, actually. Something like this. Or this. That looks good to me. And we have a skin. Maybe have like... A little... Oh, that's hair. I can't do primary skin color, it seems. But hair we can fiddle around a bit with. And have like a secondary highlight thing. I wanna get a bit of dark here. Maybe, actually, we should be um, trying to match the uh, character screen. Done. And we want definitely a good hairstyle. Hmm. <laughs> Look at that! Dang! Um, not that one. 
Um, are we gonna kill with this one, I think? No, not that one. This one is like the most similar to the um, portrait. So let's go with that. We're probably gonna get like a head slot anyway. Ah! Onward. Bring them down. These are like yeah, DLC for um, Critical Role, a roleplay group on YouTube. Show them how it's done. Ah! I'll teach you a lesson. I'll take a peek. Let's go with the smooth one. And as for bows, we definitely want something cool. Roguish sassy. Stoic, nah. Sullen, no. Either roguish or heroic. I'm thinking roguish. Done. And we're gonna name her Hera. This is our summary. Everything is doing well. Let's get into the game.